In this video, we are going to talk about how to evaluate the probability of A intersect with B. So we need A and B to occur here. So there's two cases that we're going to consider. And the first is where A and B are not independent. So if they are not independent, then the probability of A intersected with B equals the probability of A times the probability of B given that A occurs. So we can also write this. We can also write this as if we think about two stages and one where B occurs and one where A occurs. I can also write down the probability of B first and then multiply that by the probability of A given that B occurs. So both of these things describe both A and B occurring. And the fact that we're multiplying these probabilities is reflected in tree diagrams when we multiply the values in the different branches. Alrighty, so let's look at an example. So we have five red, three blue, and two green marbles. We draw two marbles without replacement. Part A asks, what is the probability that both are red? So I want to begin by talking about this phrase here, without replacement. So this means that after picking up, A marble, we don't put it back. In our stack, when picking up the next one, so in other words, after we draw our first marble, we sort of leave it out of the stack, and then we draw the second marble from what's left over. So in later in this video, we'll talk about, well, what does it mean if we draw marbles with the replacement? And that'll have to do with a scenario where after you pick a marble, well, then you put it right back in, and then you pick a second marble. Okay, so we want to find the probability that both are red. All right, so let's write down probability a little bit lower probability that both are red. Okay, and let's think about this in terms of the first marble that is selected, and then after that we'll think about it in terms of the second marble that is selected. So for the first marble that is selected, there are five reds at this point, and there are 10 total marbles. So the probability that that first marble is red is going to be 5 over 10. Okay, so 5 reds is where this came from, and 10 total is where the denominator came from. So now, suppose we pick that first marble and it is red. Well, at this point, for the second marble, if we want it to be red, there are four reds left in the pile, and there are now nine total marbles left. So the probability that the second marble is red, given that the first marble that we picked was red, is four out of nine. And if we multiply these, well, I could simplify five over 10 a little bit, that's one half. So we get one half times four over nine. And then I could cancel the four and the two a little bit to be left with a one here and a two here. And that gives me two over nine. And that is our probability. So really breaking this down, uh, this first fraction was the probability, ooh, the probability that the first marble is red times, and then the second fraction was the probability that the second marble is red 
but given that the first is red. So collectively, when we multiply these two things, it's saying that the first marble needs to be red, and then on top of that, the second marble also needs to be red. And that's why it's giving us the probability that both of them are red. All right, so we are ready for case two. Well, case two is, well, what if A, uh, let's put this in black, what if A and B, our two events are independent? Well, if they are independent, then the probability of A intersected with B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. That's coming from the definition of independence. So let's look at an example. Repeat part A, but now suppose that the marbles are drawn with replacement. So with replacement means that after picking the first marble, we put it back in our pile of marbles before picking the second one. All right, so as a result of that, because we are drawing these marbles with replacement, now there is no connection between the first and second marbles picked. So as a result, the events, the first marble is red, and I'm going to put the event in quotes. The first marble is red, that event, and the event, the second one is red. These events are independent. Because on a conceptual level, independent just means that whether or not one event happens has no effect on the chances of the second event happening. So because we're doing this with replacement, we essentially make the pile of marbles exactly the same for the second pick as it was for the first. And that's how conceptually we can tell that these two events are going to be independent without even doing any calculation. Okay, so let's use that idea to find the probability that both are red. Because that will just be equal to the probability that the first marble is red times the probability that the second one is red because they're independent, I can just multiply, and I don't need any conditional probability over here. So the probability that the first one is red is gonna be five over 10. Same thing for the second one, five over 10, because there's five red marbles each time out of 10 total. And if I simplify both of these, it's one half times one half, which is one fourth. So that's our new probability if we had to do this with replacement. Alrighty, so, I want to end this video with a question. So scooching that down a little bit, the question is, what can we say? Sorry, the question is, when can we say that two events are independent? Okay, so there are three ways that we'll see. So the first is, well, we test. We test them using the definition of independence. Okay, so that definition of independence was up here. The probability of A intersected with B needs to be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So we could work out the probabilities on both sides and make sure they're the same. Okay, so there are some scenarios where we can just conceptually see that they are definitely going to be independent. One is if there is clearly no connection
between the two events. So this usually needs to be really obvious for us to be able to just say, oh yeah, they're independent. It's got to be fairly clear that there's actually no connection between the two events. If it's somehow uncertain, we usually need to test it. Okay, and there's one final case I'll consider, which is if the sample size is so large that selecting the first object has negligible effect on the probability of selecting the second object even without replacement. So we saw that in the examples that we did above that when we did it without replacement the probability for the second object was different than the probability for the first. But if our sample size was huge, like if we had millions of these marbles, then even after picking the first one and saying that was red, that really wouldn't affect the probability of the second one being red all that much. And if that's the case, the events are, vir are virtually independent. And we will see an example of this in the next video.